What's up guys, TechLab here. Now in our last video, we showed you how to test a custom loop for leaks without any water. And to do that, we used this EK leak tester. It actually used pressurized air to be able to test if there was any leaks. And for that, we actually used this here. Now this is our current reservoir and pump that we're gonna be using in our very first custom loop system. But today we've actually got a lot more other parts. We've pretty much got everything in now and we thought we'd put together a bit of a proof of concept so that we know exactly what we're doing. So you can consider this video a bit of a beginner's guide from a beginner. Now, because I've never actually built a custom loop before, I asked you guys, what was it that I actually needed? And a lot of you sent lots of different tips and tricks in, and hopefully I followed them to the T. Before I actually go and install something that's really expensive inside our benching rig, I thought that I would actually build together a bit of a proof of concept using some cheaper parts, and see if I can make sure that I know exactly what I'm doing. And for that, I chose this stuff. Now, for those of you that follow the channel, you would have seen this already. This is our little pump and our reservoir. These didn't actually cost that much, but we showed you in a previous video how we actually put it together. And then we pressure tested it using the EK water blocks leak tester. Now, there isn't any leaks in this. I haven't touched it since the last time we did that. So that should be pretty good to go. But when it comes to other parts, I'll show you what we've actually got. Now, again, using your tips, I went for a flexible hose system. So, of course, I needed ends for that and fittings, and that's exactly what I bought. Now, I managed to get these in both black and silver, and they didn't really cost that much. But we'll crack the bag open and we'll show you exactly what they look like. Now, these fittings are a push thread, so you just simply have to remove the collar. You push the pipe onto here, and that should actually seal it up itself. There's no need for any kind of cable ties or anything like that. And then the collar simply goes back over to kind of hold the pipe in place as well as actually making it look nice. So they're pretty cool. They use a G1 quarter thread, which pretty much all of this kit does and most uh, custom loop stuff does according to my research so far. So they're pretty standard. And of course I have six of these. We'll need these for the pump. We'll need two for the pump and reservoir. We'll need two for the radiator and we'll need two for the block. Talking about the block, we actually picked up something again that was reasonably cheap. Now this is a budget block indeed and it cost me about 14 pounds. It does only fit the older Intel generation CPU sockets. So that's exactly what we're gonna be fitting it on for particularly for the trial. We don't have anything newer that uses an older Intel socket. So that's actually gonna be fit onto something a little bit old. Now, additionally with the block, of course, you get these extra little screws and these are actually for mounting it down into a system. They simply just go through the motherboard and through the top into the block and then you just screw down on top. But we'll show you that when we actually come to fit it into a system. To go with the block, the fittings and the pump and reservoir, of course, we need some way of bracketing the pump up. So we actually purchased a bracket here. Now these brackets are pretty simple. They just literally bolt straight onto like a 120 millimeter fan all on the side of your radiator. And then you can just simply mount the pump onto there. Now, of course, it depends which kind of system or which case we're actually fitting this in to where we can actually mount the pump. So we're gonna have to figure that out when we get the case. And maybe we'll use this, maybe we won't, I'm not sure, but at least we've got one in stock just in case. Now, of course, we're not finished with all the fittings yet. We do have the fittings for the pipes themselves, but we also purchased a number of these. And these are little blanks that we can actually put into the system to just block things off. We do currently have one in the fill port on top of the reservoir, but I'm suspecting at some point we might need some more and you can purchase these pretty cheap in bags of like six or eight. So I actually managed to pick up six. They weren't too expensive. I think it was about four pounds for all of them. So they're not too bad and we can always use them on a different system because they use a generally standard kind of thread and they look pretty nice because they are in this nice black. It's not a chrome finish, but it kind of matches everything else that we've got. So that's pretty cool. Then finally, of course, we have the radiator. Now I managed to pick up a radiator again on your recommendation. I've gone for something that's actually a complete copper build. Now the radiator was actually quite cheap. I think I paid around 20 pounds for it and it actually came with a lot of cool things. These are little rubber mounts that if we're going to put obviously fans to it or if it's going to be bolted next to a case, we can put these little rubber mounts in. They kind of act like fans when they've got those little rubber corners to stop any kind of vibration going through the system, particularly if we've got the pump mounted to it. It comes with all the fittings that you need, the extra long screws to go through fans into the radiator, all the little short ones so we can actually just mount the radiator up. And then we have the radiator itself. Now for this proof of concept build, we actually just went with a 240 millimeter radiator. And as soon as I purchased it, I thought maybe I made a bit of a mistake because what I would really prefer is a 360 millimeter when we come to actually build it into a system. That is purely for aesthetical reasons. There is no actual need to go for anything bigger than a 240, particularly when we're only water cooling the CPU. But if we were actually doing the CPU and graphics card, 
it would be preferably better to have something like a 360. Now after lots of research and your feedback, I think I've pretty much got this system all together. If we actually test take the pump and we'll start here and we'll just start putting things on. So obviously we need some fittings. This is actually the pump out onto the uh, side of the pump itself. And we just need to thread the fittings in and just tighten them up pretty much by hand. You don't need any tools to do this. And we've pretty much got one set up there. I'll just put the collar back on so that we don't actually lose it. And that's now ready for a pipe to go on. Of course, once we've actually finished the system, we'll pressure test it again as a complete system and we should be pretty much good to go. With the another fitting, obviously, we need a fitting on the return pipe. Now, this is where the water will actually return back into the reservoir. This is where the pump will actually push it out. And obviously, we need a fitting in there too, because the pipe and the water needs to return. So we'll stick one of them on there too. Now, I actually really like the look of these fittings. I think they look really smart. You can get barbed fittings that don't actually have these nice little collars on. I just felt that they kind of looked a little bit cheap and I couldn't really find any black ones either. You would also need to have some kind of um, extra thing to kind of just hold the pipe on like a cable tie or something like that and I thought that would just look a little bit rubbish so I actually opted for these and I think they look quite nice. With the connections or the fittings now into the pump and reservoir of course we need to pop some into the radiator and for that we need to pop out these little rubber bungs that they put in that actually just protect the radiator from anything kind of getting in there. You don't want to actually accidentally get any kind of shards in here because it obviously will need to go around the system and might end up in our pump. So all we need to do for this is again, just thread the same fittings onto the radiator, just like that. With the radiator and pump having their fittings in, obviously there's only one left and this is the CPU block. Now I'm not 100% sure which way this actually goes round. I do believe that you have to have the pipes side to side and not up and down. There was a little bit of feedback on the Amazon listing for this and, and that's exactly what they said to do, but I'm not sure whether it needs to go through this way or whether it goes through this way. So we're going to pretty much guess it. And if it's all wrong, we'll have to take the system apart again and flip it over. But what we'll do is all we need to do is just get these fittings into there. I want to remove the collars off again first, just in case I accidentally tighten it up again. And they should just mount straight down into the CPU block just like it does with the radiator and the same with the uh, pump and reservoir. And then we just simply put the collars back on again. Now that we have all of the components fitted with some uh, fittings or pipe fittings, we are ready to actually start installing pipe. Of course, at this point in a normal system, what you would be doing is actually mounting these into the system so that you can get the distances between stuff and obviously then you can run your pipe in and out. But we're not actually fitting this into a system, we're just gonna be building it onto the desk. And obviously for this, we'll need some pipe. Now, this is the pipe that we actually chose. It is just a basic, clear, flexible hose, and it will need cut into shape so that we can actually get it all together. But the simple principle of this is, what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna take it from the pump straight to the block. The water will go through the block and obviously take the heat from the CPU come out the other side into the radiator. Then it will go travel through the radiator with some fans blowing through the fins and removing that heat or dissipating it into the air. Then it will come back out of the radiator and it will go straight back into the return. Now that should complete the loop going all the way around. Now there is one thing that I just thought about as I was doing this, and I'm pretty sure you guys did mention it, but I've totally forgot. If this is actually sitting inside a system and we'll have like a radiator kind of here and it should be pretty easy just to hook those pipes up. We don't actually have a way of emptying this system. Now, usually for that, we would use some kind of tee off and tap system or if your pump has two actual holes in it, like the Corsair pumps, if you get the Corsair reservoir and pump kits together when they're a combo, you do actually have two holes in the bottom of the pump. One is obviously can be used for the drain system because the pump will be at the lowest end of the system. And the other one obviously is where the water comes back out again and or pumps into the system, but we don't have them. So what we're gonna have to do eventually is tee off of here, bring it off to a tap, then connect the pipe onto the tap or onto a T so that the water can flow around the system, but we can also drain it off at its lowest point. Now, I'll need to order those bits up. And uh, like I say, I've just remembered that we need to do that. So before we actually fit this into a system and we add water, we're gonna be putting a tap system on it. But for now, what we're gonna do is gonna take some pipe. It is gonna waste a little bit of pipe, although we'll try to reuse what we can when we come to do the system. I have bought plenty of it, so we don't need to worry. But we just need to hook this system up. As I said before, we need to go from the pump into the block, then into the radiator, 
and then we'll have another pipe that goes all the way back to the top. What we'll do is we'll just measure up a bit of pipe. So that should be enough for now. There are better ways of actually cutting pipe. I'm just using a general Stanley knife here, but there are tools that you can get to actually cut these to make sure it's nice and fine. I think we may invest in one of them. You do obviously need a proper kit when you come to hardline and we'll get one of them when we start doing hardline stuff. I think because we're going to start with flexi pipe, it'll give us the ability to just move things around and have a bit of a play with it. To get these pipes onto them, they just need to push fit. You don't, shouldn't really need any kind of other assistance for this. Once they're on, you can just push them down, get them as low as you can. And then obviously remember to get the collar. You need to definitely put the collar on and that collar will just simply screw down onto the existing system. It will get tight as it goes around the pipe because it's kind of like just about big enough to get the pipe through with the, uh, I think these, I believe these are like 13 millimeter wide with a nine or 10 millimeter internal. Before you put the other side on, obviously make sure we put the collar on first, otherwise we're not going to be able to put it on the other side. And then just the same as before, we just need to push it on as far as we can and then put the collar back up and remove it. Now, obviously you will be doing this inside of a system, so you need a little bit of a patience with it. You can't really push these things too far and you don't want to be, particularly if it's in a system, because we don't want to risk any leaks, but that is actually now connected. To go to the radiator, obviously we're going to go from this port into the radiator, so we'll cut another piece. We might make this one a little bit shorter just because we're going to start running out of room on the desk here. So now that we've actually got the pump to the block, that's where the water is going to travel. It's going to travel from the pump into the block through the block itself, which is copper, through the other pipe into the radiator, which is copper, keeping all the metals the same. It's going to travel through the radiator with fans on it, dissipating that heat. And now obviously the water needs to return to the reservoir. And there we have it. We have a full custom loop system now. It's actually going from the pump to the block, from the block to the radiator, and it will return all the way through the system into the reservoir, which then obviously gets picked up by the pump. Now with the system all together and everything reasonably tight, what I'll do is I'll just give a bit of a pressure test to this system using our EK Waterblocks leak tester and it should tell us if everything is good. Now for those of you that didn't watch the last video, this is the tester that we've got. It is from EK Waterblocks and it is a slightly older model so we had to kind of modify it a little bit. The bit that was kind of annoying me was the fact that there was no flexi on this side. It actually was on the pump side. And in the more modern versions of these, the flex is actually this side, and that makes lots of sense when you're trying to get it into a system. So we actually built our own. We built it with a few spare ends and a little bit of this pipe, and we tested this as well when we did it. Now, the principle of this, obviously, is that we need to first fit the pipe onto the system. So we'll take the pipe, and you imagine this is inside a system. We're going to screw it into the pump or the uh, blank hole that we're going to be using. Then we will mount the tester onto the other end. This just makes it a little bit easier doing this way. And then we've got the pump itself. Now the pump has a rotatable end, so we don't need to spin this round. We can simply just put it on to the other end, rotate it up, and there we've got it. Now to pump this, the easiest way that I found last time is to just put the gauge down, flip the pump round, and go from top to bottom. Now unfortunately we were having a bit of an issue with our pump. It was actually really, really solid to be able to push in and out. So what I've done is added a little bit of grease inside of here, which is why my finger is now dirty. But we'll reinstall it back onto the pressure gauge and then it should be much easier to actually start to pump up now. Having the pump down, that's loads easier now. We're gonna pump the air into the system. And with the air actually up here now onto the second bar of the green, we're gonna lock that off. Now, all we need to do is leave that for about 15 minutes and see if the air is actually holding inside the system. If it's not, we'll just go around and retighten things and we'll make sure that it doesn't afterwards. Now, after a 15 minute wait, we can see that it's actually not holding air. It's actually creeping down from the uh, green where it was. So. What we need to do is just go through and just double check all the connections, make sure things are nice and tight. I suspect it's very much on one of the fittings itself just isn't actually screwed in tight enough. They do have little O-rings on the bottom of them, but we will just tighten everything up, make sure that nothing is loose. If it is a uh, leak on one of the barbs, obviously we're going to have to go through each one individually and try and find out where that leak is. But for now, we'll just tighten everything up. We'll just check, see if it's falling at all. Doesn't seem to be falling now, so maybe one of those pinches on one of these actually kind of helped it. So let's re-add the pressure again and see if it stays up. Now, after a little bit more tweaking on the different parts, we actually managed to seal it up. I'm not exactly sure which one was actually causing a leak, but 
just to give it a little bit of a pinch on each one has actually solved the leaking problem. We can see on the gauge now that we're actually sitting about just over halfway in the green and it's not moving at all. It's been like this for about 10-15 minutes and it's looking pretty good. With the system now tested, there shouldn't be any leaks on this at all. But obviously this is just a proof of concept. We do need to get this fit into a system and I don't actually have a system built at the moment, but we do have something coming along that's going to be pretty cool. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to be able to see that. Obviously when it gets fit into the system, we're going to be putting water into this. So the real leak test happens then I suppose. But apart from that, we do have now a complete system. We can just undo this here, or at least we'll release the pressure first off the system. We just open up the tap, push into the end, it'll release that out. We'll take off these things so that we can take the tester off. So we'll simply just undo the tester there, pop that onto the side, we'll undo this, and then we'll just remount the little blank back into there so that we don't lose it. Now, obviously, once that's in there, that would be the only connection that's not tested. But to be honest, once the water's running through the system, it's not likely actually going to come out of the reservoir itself. This is now a complete kind of custom loop for a CPU. It should keep it nice and cool. We've got everything going. We'll obviously need to fit some fans onto this, but that's going to, again, depend on the system that we're doing because how do we control them and stuff like that. I did reach out to you guys to ask about how these were actually powered because we have a three pin and a Molex and I've got that information now so that's going to be ready to hook up. Apart from that I think this is actually complete and I suppose in essence this is our first custom loop even though it's not in a system but we're not going to count it. We're going to count it when we actually put it into something that you can actually see running. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and you want to see where we take this little custom loop next and I'm sure as always we'll catch you in the next one.